Lately, the concept of CRM and marketing automation have become synonymous. But they're two very different things. In this video, I'm going to teach you about marketing automation using a tool called Infusionsoft by a company called Keep. So stay tuned for that. We're all familiar with the marketing funnel. You have all of these prospects coming through the top. They're converting into information qualified leads. Then they get into a nurture funnel. That funnel keeps your brand in front of them until they're ready to make a decision and become a sales qualified lead. And then they get to the bottom of the funnel and they either convert to a sale or not. And this is how we've learned to do things in marketing. But the key part of this is the automation around the nurture funnel. What I'm gonna show you today is something called a campaign builder. And what it allows me to do is assemble a nurture funnel very easily so that we can keep emails in front of our clients, customers, and patients so that when they are ready to take action, our brand is the brand they think of first. There are two ways to communicate to contacts in a marketing automation system. The first method is what we call a campaign. And the second is what we call a broadcast. A campaign is sent to an individual contact at a point in time. And then each email in that campaign goes to that contact at a point in time specific to that contact. Where that differs is a broadcast is a single message or series of messages that goes out all at the same time to a group of contacts. Campaigns have a beginning, it's called a goal, a beginning point and goes to a contact over time. Broadcasts go to a whole group of contacts all at once. And we're gonna show you those right now. I'm using a tool called Infusionsoft by a company called Keep. And in all of their products, Infusionsoft, Keep Pro, and Keep, they have something called the Campaign Builder. And this is a tool that makes it really easy to map out your campaigns. I'm gonna to go to a Campaign Builder and I'm gonna create a campaign for a scuba shop. Now when I think about my funnel, I have to get a contact into that funnel. I might be running some ads. I might have events where people meet us. I might have past customers that I wanna interact with. No matter how I find these new people to add into the funnel, I need to take them to a place, a place where we can obtain their information. We typically call this a landing page. Now a landing page is really just a web page that only takes up one page that has one job and one job alone, to get the visitor to interact and provide their contact information. And a landing page can be created on a website, a landing page can be created with many different web page builders or specific landing page builders. And in this case, I'm going to use Infusionsoft to create my landing page. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm dragging the landing page onto the canvas. That is our entry goal. When we think of a campaign, you have to have a start some things in the middle and an end. The starting point is the entry goal. How did the person, that contact, that individual with a belly button get into that campaign? The first way we're doing this is through a landing page. Alternatively, we could create a landing page on a website and just embed the code for a form. In that case, our entry point or our entry goal could be a web form. In either case, this is the starting point of the campaign and it obtains contact information from somebody so that we can process them through the campaign. When I get to my landing page builder, I pick out a template or I could start from scratch. The template makes it easier to get going, but sometimes it's a little bit more challenging to edit it if you know exactly what it is you want in your head. I'm gonna choose a template here and I'm going to choose a very simple one. And for the sake of this example, my scuba shop is going to have some limited time offer with a discount for anybody who fills out the form. I'll change out the background to make it have a more of a scuba vibe and I'll change the copy on this and I'll put a call to action in place. And this is the landing page I'm generating to get somebody to take an action for me to get their contact information. This way I can begin a nurture sequence. And when I'm finished with my landing page, I'll move back to the campaign builder. Great, I have a landing page. I could also create a web form. 
or maybe I'm just grabbing a name and an email address and I can embed that code later on on a web page. And now let's go into the main autoresponder. An autoresponder is a series of emails that occur over time. Those emails typically have delays between them. Usually the first one goes out the day somebody opts in or gives you their information. And then subsequent emails, the tempo is based on the type of offer you're creating or the type of relationship you're building. In some cases, those are every single day. In others, they may be weeks apart. In our situation, we are gonna to put together a series of emails that get people's interest in scuba, that show us as an authority in scuba, and that come out at a frequency that doesn't look like we're spamming them too much. So I've created this sequence of emails. Now I'm gonna put some timing in. I have the timing and I'm just gonna make sure every email reads okay. And in each email, I have an authoritative post. Some of those authoritative posts are long, some of them are very short, but each one has a place to click, a place where we can determine if the reader is engaged in what we're writing. So now I have a series of authoritative emails that share useful information. And these are intended to keep our brand in front of that person, to position us as the authority, and to keep us top of mind. But if they're engaging regularly, it's probably a good idea at the end to make an offer. We wanna make an offer that either is a great deal, some sort of special, something they can purchase, or some action that we, we want them to take, whether it's give us a call or make an appointment. In the case of John's Scuba Shop, I'm going to want them to go to the store and buy something. Maybe I'll offer a special discount with a promo code. So much like the mail sequence you saw before, the nurture sequence, I'm going to have an offer sequence that follows. Usually it's just one email, sometimes two emails. Now we talked a bit about goals at the beginning, the idea of an entry goal, something that starts the campaign. But goals can be put throughout the campaign as well. An exit goal is a goal that's met when some objective of the campaign is realized. For example, in my offer, I might want somebody to make a purchase. And the act of making a purchase might want to end all my emails. Imagine I'm on email two of the nurture sequence and somebody makes a purchase. Maybe I don't want to go forward into the offer sequence. I wanna stop right there because they've already made a purchase. To do that, I create an end goal or an exit goal. Once that goal is met, it's going to exit the sequence. In this case, they purchased a product and the act of purchasing the product will immediately remove them from the prior two sequences and end those emails so that they can move forward into the next sequence. And that's typically some sort of thank you email series, or it could be a thank you with another offer. Either way, once they've met the goal to exit the prior sequences, we may have another sequence that goes on that encourages them to take some sort of action with our gratitude in the case of a purchase. And maybe the system ties into another system for order fulfillment. In that case, after the order is placed, we may want to send a message either through email or direct connection through an API call to the fulfillment system, notifying them that this order was placed. And finally, we might want to add this customer into a digest, an email series, a newsletter, something that comes out on a regular basis that's intended for customers. And the way we do that is we may apply a tag, something that denotes that this person is a past customer so that when we run additional future campaigns to past customers, all we have to do is target those that have that tag that came through a campaign like this. So that's it. That's how we create a campaign in the campaign builder. It allows us to ensure that we don't have a leaky funnel. It ensures us that when a contact comes at the top of the funnel, that we're nurturing them so that when the time comes for them to purchase from us or make a purchase from a business like us, they think of us first. And now, on to broadcasts. Getting started with broadcasts is really very easy. You first start out and pick a template for your broadcast. Or you can start from scratch. I'm going to send out a broadcast that has a gift for all of my contacts that are past customers. The first thing I want to do is I want to target a list of contacts and I pick those that have the tag called customer in this case. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure the from email address is the email address we want to use. It could be the owner of that contact in the CRM or it could be some other more generic one. I'm going to create it from the John Scuba main account. 
you put in a subject line, you put in some preview text. Preview text is the text you see. When you're looking at an email on your phone and you're scrolling through it and you see the subject and then some text below it, that's preview text. If you don't put preview text, it will show the first line of the email. However, if you do put preview text, you get more control out of enticing that person to click and open that email. A little extreme, but open me now can be our preview text. And then we put together the body of our email. And then when we're all finished, we review it, maybe send ourselves a test, and then send it out the door or schedule it for a later time. Email broadcasts are a way to get special offers, special announcements, special promotions in front of a group of your contacts at the appropriate time. Pairing broadcasts with campaigns are how you ensure that you're keeping your brand in front of your contacts over time, but also keeping important elements of your brand in front of all your contacts at a very specific point in time. So there you have it. That's the Infusionsoft slash Keep Campaign Builder and Broadcasts. And so let's go over what we do. We first have an entry goal. Usually that's something that obtains a contact, like a landing page or a web form. We then have an email series, a sequence, and that sequence happens over time. After that sequence, we have some form of exit goal, something that once met, you stop sending those emails. And then we have the follow-on conversation, either within the campaign or through broadcasts later on. I hope this is a helpful overview of the basics of Infusionsoft Campaign Builder. If you have any questions or comments on it, please type in the comments below. And as always, if you like these types of videos, I'd really appreciate a like. Thank you for your attention. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.